as practical as it is, the NGRX library is just difficult to get started with on a new project. And the main issue I think is lack of production ready, a quick start guide. So we either have this basic tutorial that uh, just explains concept here of uh, what is going on. And when you're just starting with NGRX, then uh, this can help you understand the main concept of the NGRX, but you cannot use this in production, especially if you have a project with uh, lazy loading modules, which is something you should have in your application if you have more than one module, which is basically why you're looking at the NGRX in the first place. If you're developing a single module, a simple application with one single module, then you do not need NGRX, basically. One other thing that is available is this example app here on the project itself, on the NGRX platform itself. And you can use this to see how people who basically made the NGRX intended us to use this library. And here you must be very careful to choose the right branch. For example, latest uh, either tag or a branch. The latest tag right now is uh, 9.2 or 10 beta. And I am running one uh, sample, uh, one basic uh, Angular application here, the Angular 10 version. So I'm going to choose the 10 beta here because it's the closest thing to the production. However, even though if we are on the right branch, the code here is already integrated with their sample, sample application. So you need to reverse engineer this code, basically. Uh, you need to find the way into the minimum code that is needed for your specific application. And I think that things like this put off a lot of people from using NGRX, as you either have to be a master of NGRX to use it, or you will struggle your way into it. And uh, I struggle every time I start a new project with this. So I either have to compare it with my previous integrations uh, and copy things around, or I have to hack my way into the changes that were made in newer versions, because they are constantly improving the application and each new version sort of brings the new changes and the slightly different way of uh, doing things. So what I thought we could do today is use both of these links here that I show and we can try to figure out what is needed for a minimum production ready version, what is usually called a seed project. And uh, I will publish the source, but since both Angular and NGRX change quite often, I don't think I will be able to maintain it. So I think it's better to show you what you need to do next time you are uh, going to use NGRX. So I thought that we can make one simple Angular app with two modules. And I will put links with uh, timestamps in the, the description and maybe on the screen. In case you already have an app and you just want to uh, jump straight to the installation of NGRX and you know what the NGRX is and uh, what its purpose is. But if you wish to see the entire process, we'll make one application with uh, two modules. We will actually show the need for NGRX in the first place. What problems does it, uh, does it solve? And then we'll continue and uh, configure library. And at the end, we will show how we can actually benefit from NGRX uh, state management library. So I have an... Uh, simple basic uh, and angular application here that I just installed using the uh, CLI command. And I will just make one uh, module for the layout with uh, the header and the footer. So in our app, I will just make one folder core or shared, and I will make one new module called layout. And this module we contain, will contain the, sh the header and the footer and other universal elements of the layout that we might use in our application. So let's make a new component for header and a new component for footer. And just for the demonstration, let me from the app component, let me move the header from here. Uh, I will move this entire toolbar into the header. Let's include the app header here. I'll do the same with the footer, just to, to have something that we are going to look at. Actually, let me remove all of these cards. Let's move this to footer, right? And let's include the footer here. Now let's see what's happening inside the browser. Okay, we sort of have something uh, in, at this welcome thing. Let's just remove these buttons. And let's move our router outlet somewhere between the header and the footer, right? In the main section. I probably messed up some HTML, but it doesn't matter. We are just proving the concept. And in the header, let's put one search field just to illustrate how the sharing of the values or the state is going to happen between different modules. So I just 
if I just put this pan search and need one spacer here and we have our search here let's try to style it a bit because uh, the HTML sample CSS is just included here into the main file it doesn't matter I'll just copy it so all this toolbar related thing will move into the style tag here now it's a bit more better, a bit easier to look at. I need a spacer as well. Okay, so the search is here. What we want to do now is when we type something into the search product, we want that information from that module to be shared with another module that will list the products here. We will not make the products and anything. We will just show how the, the sharing information goes with, with the use of NGRX. So let's make our products module. I am using CLI or uh, PHP Storm's helper for helper for using the CLI. It's just basically helping with with autocomplete. But you can do the same thing from the console from the CLI, Angular CLI regularly or your editor if you have any a helper or a plugin. So products module. And inside we will have one component that will list products. List component. Now, what NGRX people recommend of doing and what I also found very useful, even if you're not using NGRX, is to split the actual presentation logic from the application and business logic. So it's a concept known as a smart and dumb uh, components or a smart and uh, presentation components. And it's a great com concept. It will make your life so much easier when it uh, comes to reusing components. So definitely check it out if you're even if you're not using NGRX. I will link uh, put uh, some articles that explain explain the concept better. So it's called smart component and presentational components or dumb components because uh, the presentational components sort of don't have any idea what they're presenting. They just do the interaction with the users and the smart component are actually fetching and dispatching the data and showing the components. This allows you much more reusability of presentational components throughout your application. So I just make one folder for the, uh, compo for the containers or the smart components. And actually this list, uh, this container should be in the products module. And this list uh, should be into the uh, separate folder called components. Now the IntelliJ will refactor code for me if it's included somewhere. And that's why I recommend IntelliJ and some smart editors because you can easily refactor without thinking about it. You just move it and the editor will fix everything for you. So here into our containers, we will actually have one smart container or smart component, if you will. And it will just dispatch data around and it will include the presentational components. So this one can be called the uh, list uh, display, for example just so that it's a bit different and we want uh, we don't actually need the style for it and we don't need the template for it so i will just include the inline style and uh, have it flat so this display component now will actually here include our presentational component let's not call it dumb component because we want to be nice towards our components we are making them a bit smarter so it's a sort of presentational component and now in order to get to this module, let's just make a quick uh, routing where we are going to put one route, which will go to the path, for example, of products. And uh, this one will be lazy loaded. So it will uh, load children. And here we will going to import the products module. And then we want to run our products module. Now let's see what our application is doing. And there are no, uh, no that much errors so far. Let's open the console. So no errors here. And if we go to our products, we don't get anything happening. And that is because our products module should call list display component. And here we also need a route, right? So let's make one simple route, uh, constant route. An array with a path basically a root path and here we are going to load the component list display component right actually here i might need the list component fill now if i refresh we still don't get nothing and that is because i forgot to uh, import the router module right for child and we need to give our route let's import this the IntelliJ is uh, automatically importing uh, our libraries 
because it can recognize where they are in the project. And now we have the list works here and we want to change that a bit so that we can see something. Let's uh, put one more line where we say uh, you searched for and then we need some way of displaying the search term here that we are actually that the user is actually typing in the shared module in the layout module into the header component into the search field here so how are we going to get the search field from the header from here into our lazy loaded module into the list components here well, in order to share values between components, to share our application state between components uh, in a single module, we can just lift the value one step up and then pass the value down to the next component, like from header and footer here that we have. So it's easy as long as they're in the same module. But if we want to use the data from different modules, like uh, here where the user is typing something into the header in the layout module, and uh, we want to show something into the products module, this approach of lifting uh, variables becomes a bit more challenging. Here we have two modules, but we might uh, need to pass data between five or ten modules. However, the same problem appears. And we could use one service and uh, remember this search parameter there temporarily in the service. Then we can use the service in other modules to get the data from the memory, right? Or we could store this search term uh, and get it from the URL. Actually, this search term actually fits quite well into the URL. But there are other parameters that uh, we might want to share here. Let's say that in a list of the results, we want to select one product and then uh, in some other module where we want to show the, your selection or your the product that you have selected, for example, in a shopping cart, so we now need to pass much more data between modules and components. And by doing it manually, each and every variable, it can become a mess very quickly because it's very easy to lose control over who has the data. And we get all of, of kind of race conditions if what component is looking or modifying the data. And we get the problems with default values as well. We have to manually store all our data into the local storage if a user refreshes the application. And uh, we cannot easily test our application because we are storing our data all over the place. And suddenly we can easily get a duplication of data if we are not very careful with it and where some weird things can happen with our code. So we need some place, a one unique place to save our entire application state uh, globally so that all modules and components can access and work with uh, exactly the same data, with one data. So we need a single source of truth, if you will, uh, one place where we know that all data is like a JavaScript uh, database in a memory where we can tip where we can store things for our components, where we can store the state of our application. And this is where Redux pattern solves majority of our problems. We get a single state that the entire application can access. It's predictable state. We define that state strictly so we know where values are and what are the default values. We also have a immutable state, meaning we never actually change the state, but rather we create a new one. And this allows us to do, for example, undo and redo actions indefinitely, or it can also allow us to debug our application, but by manually going from state to state, I will show you later with a debug extension into the Chrome. And it also means the testing is easier. We can make our state as needed and then test the behavior of our entire application based on that specific state that we want the application to be it. We can also log each action together with its values it contains, then we can debug our application offline by just looking at the, the state that was passed when the bug occurred and we can see all the changes that happened. And something that is very practical in real life as well, and that is you get it free with NGRX and that is persisting the entire state between page refreshes with the local storage, where the NGRX library or a plugin or an additional library will basically rehydrate the application state from local storage on the page load, on the refresh, which means that the user will see exactly the same state of the application after the page is refreshed. Of course, it will has all the values that you stored in the global state in the first place. So what you set in your store, it will be there after the page refresh and the application will magically set itself with all correct values if, as if the user was, was to enter or type them manually. And I will show you this later with this example. So if we would continue to using services and making some global state, we would basically end up with our own implementation of Redux pattern or the NGRX library. And we are basically 
trying not to reinvent the wheel, we just want to be productive in our everyday life. So how it works? What's the basics of NGRX? Well, here is a OK diagram of uh, on the documentation page, and it, it shows the important elements of the NGRX. And the most important is the store here. And the store, it basically stores all the information. All data that our application uses will be stored in this uh, big object, basically. It's called store. And that data we get out of the store using these selectors. And these selectors are basically just uh, functions that retrieve only the relevant portion of the state for us so that we don't have to parse the huge state object every time we need just uh, some parameter or some small portions. And we'll use some selectors later to see how they work. And then we have our components. In this case, it's one component, but each and every component will use these selectors to get the state from the store. And the first time our application runs, this will basically be set to default. So our component will be set to the default state we want it to, to be. And the components can get that data and uh, either present it or do some logic based on the values in that store, like a switch on and off and etc. And when we do something with the component, that then we have these actions here. Our component is sending an action and perhaps some data with it. Action is basically an event. It's actually one string being passed around our application, but it is something that reducers here are listening to. And if one reducer is watching for a particular action, then it will do something that with S we ask it to do. Basically, in majority of cases, the reducer will update some state into the store. And then we have completed the circle because some other component will basically subscribe to that value that we each have just updated and it will get the updated value. So this circle goes around so that all of our components can change some data into the store using reducers and they can select some data from the store using the selectors. And that way we have a single source of true which is this, which is this store here. It's basically a huge uh, JSON object or a huge uh, JavaScript object which we can think of sort of like a database, memory database for our JavaScript application. As you can see, we also have the effects here. And that is something that we are not going to cover right now. But what the effect does is uh, it interacts with the externals, uh, some, with some services, and usually with some external services that might or might not even change the store state. And they're not always there. Typical examples is when we're interacting with some APIs or change some uh, things that are outside of our applications, but we'll not go much into that. And this is a bit easier to understand in practice. So let's implement the NGRX library now. And we'd start with the installation. We can uh, just use what's written here if you're using YARN or NPM, on, or you can even use the NG, I will use the NPM. Let me stop the application and install this. Now this is installed version 9.2. So let's go here and switch to 9.2, just so that I'm looking at the real, uh, the relevant example here. Now it's not enough to just install this store here, because we uh, need some other things for production. And those are the libraries that are listed here. The effects is something we might not need for this tutorial, because we want just want to show something, but you will most likely need that if your application is talking with some other applications at all, with your backend basically. Uh, the router store is something that we might need and that connects the Angular router to the NGRX store so that we can subscribe to the events and we can store the routing of the application into the our store basically. That can come in handy, so let's just install that one as well. The entity is a state adapter. We might not need it right now, but it's a very useful thing, especially for listing of products. It allows you to work with sort of like a database or the entities that uh, that uh, NGRX helps with. You can read more about it, but we definitely need the store dev tools because it will help us see into the console what is going on with our application. Let's install that one. I know my computer is not that fast. I'm just speeding up things in post-production so that you don't have to wait for it. And I think that's all for now what we need. Now let's set up the main store. Here there is a concept on uh, getting started. However, this is not how they are using it in their, into their example. So let's follow their example. And let's actually start with the uh, main module, which is in source apps. 
to the app module here. And we can see the commented part here showing that our store module is in including sending some root reducers for root. So let's copy that one and see where it will lead us from there. If I paste that into our app module, we can import the store module. However, this root reducers is something that we don't have. And this configuration is something that we don't need for now. So let's remove that one. And let's see where this root reducers come from. And we can see that it comes from the root folder folder called reducers. Now the word reducers will be used quite a lot. So please pay attention. I will try, try to show where each reducer is being shown because this is a modular application. So this is our root reducers. Let's open that one to see what's going up there. So in our app, open a new tab. We have the reducers here. And there is one index HTML. Sorry, what in one index TypeScript. So into our root root, we have one folder reducers. And let's make that folder in our application. So that in our root we have one folder called reducers. And inside it we have one index TypeScript. And let's open that file to see what they have inside. Inside there is a lot of things happening. However, uh, let's see what our export was. So we want to have our bare minimum, right? So we are looking for root reducers. And that is basically something that composes our main state. So let's copy this one to see what happens. Now let's try to import the action map and the injection token. Action and state. Now let's see what we're missing here. We're missing the from layout, which has a layout feature key. And the from layout here, we find in code is something that we need to have from the core reducers layout reducer. So one more reducer, right? Copy this one just to have it here for our reference. And in our case, we are not in the example app. We are into the, instead of core, we have the shared. And there we don't have the reducers. So we need to make in our shared the layout and also the new folder reducers. And actually, it should be into our layout module because that's where we decided to put it. You might put it somewhere else. This is just a demo that I'm making. And here we need one layout reducer TypeScript. Now let's find that layout reducer into this app here. We go into the app and it's into the core. Reducers layout reducer, right? What we have here is uh, some is actually the layout reducer. It is the actual portion of the store related to the layout. And we can see that there is a this portion of the object called uh, state, which has a showed side navigation. And this is basically similar to what we have with our search, except that we are not showing or hiding the side navigation. We are entering some search field. So let's export this key feature. If you remember, we had one key feature and let's export this reducer and put it here. And then we will just fine tune it a bit. So let's import create reducer and the on and the layout action is something that we are missing. But let's just check if everything is correct here. The layout matches with our layout reducer with our layout module, right? So this is sort of like a database, uh, like a table in our uh, database. And actually, let's make these layout actions, these authentication actions we don't have for now. So let's remove that one. And instead of show side navigation, we're going to have the search value. And this is a reducer here. That is basically, if you remember our diagram, that is something that will update our store based on the action that is going on. So we can see that it's listening to an action then it is reducing our store or it is changing our store data. And we can see that here it's listening for the layout action, in this case, closed side navigation, but we will have something like searched for product. And then we are going to change this state by changing the show side navigation. In our case, we are going to change the search value to something that our uh, action is actually providing us. So, so here it, we, we will get the parameter from our action search. And this parameter, this is now showing us a lot of errors because we didn't make these actions. So let's make the actions first and then we will come back here because it will be 
uh, much easier to understand what is actually going on. This one should be searched here. And the layout actions needs to be here into the layout folder called the actions. And that we can find by looking at the layout here. So into our core, we have the reducers, but we also have the actions, right? And there is a layout action, but there is one index TypeScript, which basically just groups all of the sub actions. So let's make that index and uh, it will be clear why. And we are making that index because it helps us to sort of organize the data because you will have a lot of actions for a lot of functionality here, for a lot of modules, a lot of components. So keeping those actions organized and using the sort of like a parent name, grouping them, for example, in this case, it's layout actions. This will help us even if we have only one action for now because it we can easily extend it. So if you remember where we are, we are into the core actions. In our applications, we are into the core shared layout actions. So we're gonna make one index TypeScript and paste this one. We don't want any user actions. However, we do want our layout actions, which we are going to make right now. And now we go back to the layout actions. Here we can see that we only have a create action open and close side navigation. In our case, we are going to need only one. We are only going to change the search field, right? So let's call it uh, type in the search because I am that creative. And uh, beside the type, which is just a string, the unique identification for this action, we need to pass the parameters here and we pass them by using the props which will be of a type of a search value, which will be string. Let's import the props. And now this uh, props function will uh, receive these values. Now, if we go back from this layout actions, we need to go back to the index to check if it's all okay. We need to go back to the reducers to see what's going on. Uh, sorry, the layout reducer, not the main reducer, because we here now have the layout actions that we didn't in include, and we need to import them from the actions index, right? And here the layout action is type in search. That's what we defined just a minute ago. This state is red because it should be of type state. And the search is red because we are actually passing the search value, and the search value is basically the search value, which we can write a bit shorter like this. And I forgot to close the parentheses here. Let's put this into the second line so that we can see what's going on. Now what's going on is that we have the string here and this one is defined as Boolean. So we need to define this as a string, right? And here the initial value should be set to empty. Now instead of, uh, now this one is, looks like a selector, but it's not, it's just a portion of the state. And I think this one is a bit over on engineering, over engineered. Thing, but uh, this is just returning a portion of the state that we are going to make the selector from. You can make the selector from right here, but I will follow what they are doing into the NGRX example app. So now this one uh, looks fine. No red uh, errors here. If we refresh our application, there's a, uh, certainly a bunch of errors. Let me just start it. And of course, the store module is showing that there is uh, no root reducers for the root. So we need to continue with our integration. If we go back to our reducers, we see that there is some for from router and let's see what that is about. So we are now into the root reducers index. Let's open what they have into their root reducers index. And there is the from router. And that is basically just an NGRX router store. So let's copy that one. Let's copy this import and this one we got basically for free because this router store library takes care of it for us. Now we see that this state is sort of complaining because it's not defined. And let's see what that state does. It's uh, basically this interface state, which just sets our definition of our uh, table in database, if you wish, it's like what they describe here. This means that our top level state interface is just a map of keys to inner state types. Good luck with that. Let's copy that one here. So what we, what this does is basically uses the string, this layout feature key, if you remember, we set it up to the layout here. And the second parameter here is router, which we got from our 
router, right? That's the thing that we got for free. And I see that IntelliJ imported this state, which we don't need because we are making our own state from here. And that is one of the dangers when you're just copying pasting and using the smart IDE as the IntelliJs. So now we are exporting our root reducers and let's see into the app module. We have this uh, root reducer, so we can just click here to import it. Click Alt Enter. Now this one is resolved. Let's see our application. What will it complain about now? It says compile successfully and we are basically at the beginning. So we have installed our first store. And now if you install this uh, Redux application, we can see that it says the no store found. Make sure to follow the instructions. And if you were to follow the instructions, you would basically get to the this page uh, showing the setup. However, that's already set up here into the example application. So we can just copy it from there. And we can see that here there is a store router connection module. We uh, we actually we can uh, install this while we are watching at it. So let's just copy and paste that one. And there is also store dev tools module, which will help us with the debugging. Let's import that one, and we can just change. This is the name that will be shown into application. Let's uh, call it a demo setup. App. If we go back to our application, we can now see that there is something happening with our store, with our with our Redux extension. And we can see that there are some things happening, for example, like the store was initialized and there was a recreation and there was some navigation. Basically, that was the refresh of the page. But we can also see our state. And here we can see that we have our layout as a search value. And we also have our router here. We can even see the raw state from it. So this is what we defined, if you remember. This is our the key that we defined, the layout and the router. Let's find that in our application quickly. So that is the root reducers. It's this one. This one is called layout and this one is called router. So they are just importing the definition for the store from their modules. And at the end, we have this main central JSON, main big objects that we are, main big object that we are going to use to store our values and pass them around. Now, the good thing is that once you set this up for the application, that's basically the hardest part, although something that using the NGRX itself is the hardest part in your application. But let's see how we can benefit from it, how we can share this search term that we type in here. How can we give it to the other module and to the other components? So let's connect our header field here with, to the, with the store by uh, letting this field dispatch the action with this value and that action will be caught by some reducer that will update our state so that this search value is not empty when we type here. We want this to be stored into the search value and we do that by opening our smart component, smart container. And from here, we need to dispatch the action towards the store, but our search field is not actually into this component, it's actually into our app list component. Let me close all other files. Uh, sorry, it's not the list component, it is actually the layout header. And in this layout header, we want to have the uh, on key up. We want to dispatch some event, dispatch an action to the store. So let's call this field a just a local variable, search field. Let's call one local function that will be called search field changed, and it will have our search field, right? We can actually pass the search field value. Let's make this component. Let's make this method, create a method, and let's just console log our value to see what's going on. If you open our application, we right here, we see things happening into the console, which is great, which is what we want to achieve. Now, instead of console logging this one, we need to uh, send this parameter via the action to the reducer that will put it into the store. Easy. And to do that, we need our store here. So it will be a private property store of a type store. Now we need to import our store from layout. And we need to get its state and this store let's import that one and the layout we are going to import uh, we can see how they did it in their uh, their actions actually here into the layout actions there is no dispatching with the parameter there is just dispatching of the regular of the plain actions you can look into the books module into the containers the smart components and we can uh, try the 
for example, find book page. And we can see that they are dispatching one find the book page action, which is a search books with the query. And this is basically what we need. And this is the part of hacking around this uh, example app that you need to do. So let's dispatch uh, some of these actions. Now we have this store and uh, this from uh, layout is actually from books in their case. From the reducers, we are basically importing the layout reducer. And we also, instead of find book page actions, we need uh, the layout actions, right? And that is type into the search. And you remember the props that we set, it's the search value that we are setting right now. And this search value is basically the value that we are passing from our field. It's this value. Yes, that's the one. Now this one is from books. We need it from layout. And now let's see what happens with our application. What errors messages do we get? We have the compile successfully here, which is great. If we refresh, everything is great. If we type something here, you can see that there are, beside logging, there is an action being called open side nav, and that's because I didn't rename the action name. But we can see that the layout, the actual value of the store matches what is the here entered here. So the product, we can see that our JSON value is changing to what we type here, which is basically a success, which means that we have connected the input area with our store. Let's, let me just change this open side nav so that it doesn't mess with my head. And that's into the actions. And it's layout, search for product. Now if we go back, we refresh, the action is now called search for product and we can see that value still changes. However, this term is still not getting any data and that is because we don't have this portion of the circle here where we are basically going to select some portion from the store and pass it to the component. What we have done so far is that we have just made this portion here where the component is sending the action to the store through the action and reducer. So let's make a selector quickly. Now this selector is a bit tricky to find or if you know what you're looking for, you might find it very easily. And here is a select feature selector. It's into the main reducer here. So let's take one feature selector and then a selector. So we are basically getting our state from the layout feature key or from the layout state. So if we take that one and go to our, was it a layout reducer now? No, it's into the root reducer. So it is into the root reducer. So let's put it into our root reducer. Now this is our root reducer. And here we are going to basically create a feature selector and have our layout feature nav. And this select show side navigation is something I forgot to rename. It is not select show side navigation. It will be select search value because that's what we are looking for here, actually the search value and close some files. So let's have here select search value. And now we are going to use this select show side navigation or let's rename it to the search value. I really don't like that they are sharing the same name from here and from the from layout. So I'll just have this select search state value because I am bad at naming. And this selector is something that we're going to use into our list component here, into our list display component. So here we need to subscribe to the store using that selector that we just mentioned that will get our value that we are going to pass to the app component, to the app list, and that we are going to show here. And we do that by following the example they have in the here with the, for example, uh, search result or the search error, search loading, whatever. Let's uh, take this one. Now this store is something that is coming from the, in this case, from books state, but we want it from the layout, right? Let's import this store. Let's import our from layout. So we use the same logic as they did. So instead of from books, we are going to import everything from layout to the reducers. But in this case, we want to go to the root reducers. And instead of books, we want to select the search value. The dollar sign here just shows this. this is observable, which this uh, method returns. So instead of from layout, let's make this one and let's make one uh, field, which will be observable type string. Let's import the observable. 
and here we're going to select our search state value. Now this search value is something that we're going to pass to our less intelligent components as the uh, search value, which is not yet created. Let's create it into our app list as an input. And then let's just show it instead of this placeholder here. Now if we refresh, we sort of don't see it, and that might be because we have an error here, which says that property is private, which is true. And it's still not working, and that is because something is missing. So let's subscribe to this search value just to see what is uh, happening with it. So we'll just console log the value. And it is getting the error, uh, it is getting, not the error, sorry, it is getting the value. So the value is reaching this uh, subscription here, this observable over here. And besides this being a spell error, search value, I don't see much wrong, except that, of course, we are not on our products because we restarted the application. So if we go to products, we see the object here which is sort of like what we want, but we don't want to show the object. And that is because this value here needs to be passed as async because it's uh, observable. And now we can actually see that what we type here is being displayed below. So we can see this console log and we can see that there is a lot of actions and we can see the value here. And uh, one of the advantages I mentioned is that here you have all the changes and we can easily jump to this change which means that if you watch uh, this uh, portion here, we are basically traveling in time and seeing how the state went for our application. We can even see that the search value is being changed inside our state object. And we are basically using all the benefits of the state or the NGRX. And this way you can easily implement the undo and you can travel back and you can log all these actions. And you can see everything that's been happening. Now, this example is using one lazy loaded module and one eager loaded module, meaning that the header is always visible here, which makes things a bit easier as we are not actually using the selectors from another module, but rather from a root module, which is always available or the eager loaded module. However, if you need to access information between two lazy modules, you might consider to have one shared module where, or you could extract only the Redux functionality in uh, smaller modules and then you would include these shared modules in all modules that need this functionality. You know that Angular is modular, so the Angular would initialize both modules for you. You could also, I guess, tie two lazy modules directly if they are depending on, it, uh, on one each other. And then the Angular with bootstrap both for you when one of them is loaded that has a dependency on the other and thus giving you both stores available so that you can have them at your disposal as if you are to use something from another lazy loaded module it basically needs to be loaded otherwise it will be empty but when it's loaded it will still be empty and have the default values since it is the first initialization of it. Now a good design should uh, avoid this kind of entanglements the modules should be as much as possible self-sustained so not blending with other things but uh, sometimes you do what you have to do and let's make a store local storage available so that we can show the another benefit of ngrx so if we google for ngrx local storage we can get this library and if we just uh, install it in our application let's stop it now if we install it as it's described here, we basically need a meta reducer for it. You recall maybe that we removed some meta reducers, but let's add them here. This one goes into our app module. Let's define it here. Now these keys here is which part of the store you want to preserve into local storage. For example, we don't want to preserve router uh, state because the router will take care of itself. So we can just put the uh, layout here. Let's import all these dependencies. Now these meta reducers are something being passed to the store module for root as a second parameter here. We removed uh, already one object if you recall. Now if we refresh our application, hopefully no much, not much errors will be shown. Let's run it. Now when we refresh our application, we don't see much changed. But if we look in, into our uh, actual local storage here, we can see this value named search value here. And if I type something here, uh, like the angular test, if I could write, 
we can see that this actually is being stored into our local storage here as the key value pairs. And that is our key layout that we defined and all of its values being stored here. Now, if I refresh the application, it disappears because we are not, we have not configured our local storage script to rehydrate our uh, application from the local storage. And to do that, we can just use this rehydrate parameter. And that one we put here as the additional parameter, rehydrate to the true. Now, if we go to our application, if, if we refresh and we search for products, we do a refresh of the application. You can see that this value here is what was being stored into local storage. So now it's preserved. And if you would have a lot of values here, they would all be preserved. And our application will basically be into the same state as it was before the refreshing. You can see that the state here is basically what we had before the refresh. So no matter how many times I refresh, this state is being set to the to the default value, or in this case, not the default, but whatever is being stored into our local storage. And this way you're preserving the state of this application between the refreshes of the page. And I understand that this setup takes some time and I wish they would provide a better documentation for a typical product production application that you might use. And I believe this is the main reason basically why a lot of people are in general avoiding NGRX and maybe even the entire Angular, because there is a lot of things to do to get something which is basically provided for free in some other frameworks. But the good things here is that uh, there is an example application that you can dig in and you can figure things out, but it takes time and uh, builds up to a frustration if it's not, uh, and it's not without it quirks. Now, I hope that you got something out of this tutorial and that maybe using NGRX is a bit easier now. Please write me a comment if you think that something should be explained a bit better and I can do it into the follow-up video to this one. And uh, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.